there. I just want to talk to you today a little bit about some phrases that you can use fluently in American English. So the first phrase is, oh man, what a bummer. And the other phrase is, I bet. And another one is, sounds good. So these three, three phrases I think are super common in American English. I use them all the time. So let's look at the first one. What does that mean? Oh, bummer. That means that you're not very happy about something, right? So when something is a bummer, it means that you just aren't, you know, very happy with the situation or you're bummed out. We also say bummed out, right? So that's a phrasal verb. Um, so like, for example, oh man, this weather is really bumming me out. I mean, it's been raining every day and it's summer, so I can't do anything. I can't get outside and enjoy the summer vacation, right? It's really bumming me out. So you could say, it's bumming me out or, oh man, what a bummer. So notice how we also say, oh man, oh man, what a bummer. And make sure that your intonation rises, right? Oh man, and then say, what a, what a, what a bummer. And then um, another one is, I bet. So we use this when we want to agree with someone, right? So we say this, for example, um, yeah, things are really difficult right now in the United States because we're making decisions about having to uh, stay home and take classes online. So this is, it's a really hard um, situation for us. And then someone else would agree with you and they would say, yeah, I bet. I bet, right? So this is an, a way for us to give enthusiasm and kind of enunciate that we agree with the other person. So um, try that one out instead of saying, oh, I see, or I agree, right? Instead say, I bet. Okay, and the other one is sounds good. So this one we use all the time when we are making plans with someone, right? I use it very frequently. So I'm talking to someone or I'm texting someone and we're making plans for the weekend. Okay, so let's meet up on Saturday at two o'clock. Let's go have some coffee and, and hang out. And then I say, okay, that sounds good. So you can you know, use it for an agreement all the time. So it's when you're, usually when you're, you're agreeing that the plans um, are good for you, that the time works, um, we oftentimes say sounds good. We, we oftentimes say sounds good. And um, to be more enthusiastic, you could say, sounds great, right? And when you're speaking, it's really important to focus on your intonation, right? So let's look at those three phrases again. So you're showing your emotion through your speaking, right? So bummer is something bad, right? You're, you're sad about something. Um, so you want to make sure your intonation drops, right? Oh, bummer, right? Oh, man, so you can hear my voice go, ooh. So the pitch, ah, and low, right? So pitch is what is important for the rising and falling of our voice to make sure that we show our, emo our emotions through our voice. So the other one is, um, the other one that I was talking about is, I bet, right? Notice how high my voice is. I, I bet. And notice how I'm opening my mouth to really enunciate those words. And it's, it's really important that you're showing that you care, you know what I mean? That you're agreeing with them in that situation so it really helps you to get a little higher with that one. Um, and then the other one is, sounds good, sounds good, right? You can hear my voice go, ha ha. Um, or even, sounds great, great, right? So I noticed a lot with my students that um, they don't have enough emotion in the way that they speak in English and they're maybe translating from their native language where their language um, doesn't have this stressed timed rhythm um, and also the intonation doesn't rise and fall as much as in American English. So um, be aware of this. Be aware that um, if you're not showing emotion through your intonation and the rising and falling of your pitch that um, you might be having some miscommunication and you don't mean to, right? So like, for example, if I say, if I say, um, oh, I had such a fun time this weekend, right? So it's kind of confusing because it's like, well, you're telling me you had fun, but I don't hear it in your emotion, right? 
I had so much fun this weekend. So my voice is just staying the same pitch and it's also putting the same stress on every syllable, right? But in American English, we rise up, right? I had so much fun this weekend, fun, right? So now the, the voice rises on that word fun because you're trying to enunciate your uh, emotion coming out of that, all right? So check out some of my other videos about pronunciation and uh, vocabulary and everyday language and um, to help you increase your fluency in English. Bye-bye.